Well, good morning. Good morning. Let me just extend my welcome to everyone who's here. We are so thankful that you are with us this morning and that you have just come our way. Uh, today being the first Sunday of the month, we're going to do a, an alternate format. And this Sunday, we are focusing on our VBS theme of, that is Hometown Nazareth. And that theme is the idea that Jesus is like us. So, as, as we sort of get started today, I'd, I'd like to uh, just ask a few questions and get some audience participation, especially from our kids. So, um, by a show of hands, how many of you have ever cut yourself and needed a Band-Aid? Okay, a lot of people. Okay, all right. Um, how many of you have ever laughed so hard at an inappropriate time, like you just, you were laughing, but you knew you shouldn't laugh, you're trying to hold it in. How many of you have done that? Okay, all right. How many of you have ever burped? Okay. How many of you have cried so many tears that sometimes you just need somebody to hug you? Yeah. I ask all of these questions Because when God chose to reveal himself, he did it through a human body. And for 33 years, Jesus shared our flesh and blood. He was just like you and me. He felt what you and I feel. He felt weak and tired. He got blisters in his, on his feet, and he got splinters in his hands. He burped, and he had body odor. He got colds, and he had to blow his nose. And there were times that he laughed, that hearty laugh. And there were times when he cried and was so sad that he needed somebody to hug him. You see, he was so common that the people came to him. They came to him by night. As he was walking, they touched him. They would invite him to eat with them. They would put their children at his feet. And you know why? It's because he refused to sort of be like a statue in He refused to be like a a movie star with a whole bunch of bodyguards around him. He He chose to just be Jesus. And you know, no one was ever afraid to draw near to him. Now, some mocked him and misunderstood him. Others listened to him and revered him. But no one considered him too holy or too divine to experience his humanity. And so that's what we want to focus on this morning in our worship. That Jesus had a family. He had a name. He had a home. Just like we do. And he worshiped And he served just like we are able. So let's think about these things as we worship our God this morning. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent was sent from God to a city of Galilee named, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to, to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great 
and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born and will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So the way today is organized is we're going to go through the different aspects of Jesus being God with us. Uh, Jesus had a home, which uh, Grant just shared with us, the beginning of his life, and with his aunt uh, there. And we're getting ready to sing Magnificat to uh, kind of focus our minds on uh, this reading that we just had. So Jesus had a home, and just as Adam talked about, all the things with their house uh, that he may have, you know, done there. But uh, whether you think of home as far as his family or his physical property, but he had a home just like we did. And then we're going to move on to, before we get to home, uh, this first section is talking about Jesus's family, uh, that he had, you know, cousins, and he had his mom and dad there with him just like we do. And there's all the familial Uh, aspects of of his relationship. Then we're going to move on to talk about Jesus's name. You know, he had a name just as our God, Yahweh, has a name. And he also knows us by our individual names. We'll talk about him and his home, and we'll talk about how Jesus also worshiped God just as we do. And then we'll finish this morning's uh, sessions as we, and this is the same Uh, kind of iteration we'll go through in our VBS on Saturday, but Jesus was a servant, and he served others. So be thinking about that. Jesus uh, had a family, he had a name, he had a home, he worshiped God, and he was a servant. Let's sing. For nothing is impossible with God. Let us pray. Dear Father, we're so thankful that you prepared ahead of time to send your son Jesus upon this earth to have him been born of a virgin. And Lord, what a great family that was begun at that time by you giving of your only son. Lord, we're so thankful for the family and that we have, and especially the family we have here at Concord. And Lord, we pray that we might grow closer with our family members, that we might get to know each other better, that we have conversations with another, and that we, we pray for people when they are hurt and feeling bad and are sad. And that we rejoice in good times when we have good times. Lord, help us have better connections with each other. Because in doing so, we become stronger and we become more unified. And Lord, we're so thankful that we have brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we're thankful for also our little ones that are young that are learning about Jesus. We pray, Lord, that as we have the Vacation Bible School coming up and they'll learn about Jesus and how he was and how he was just like us in many and all ways, yet without sin, but that how he cared for the little ones, knowing that the heavens could be like these, as he said in the Bible, how look at these little ones and what the kingdom of God is going to be like. And we notice that how all the little ones play together, they, they laugh together, they sing together, they they do things together. They, they're sad with each other. They care for each other. And let us have that same love that little children have. As we grow older, we keep that same love that we have towards each other and that we know that you care for about all of us. Help us never forget that, God, we know you're on our side. And help us, God, never forget that we have tough times, that we lean on another family member and their brother and another sister in Christ to help us through those times. And we're thankful, Lord, that we can come unified and learn to love each other more every day, just like Christ did for us when he died on the cross. And he was 
praying for them on the cross, even while he was dying. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And Lord, let's have that same attitude in our lives, that we are willing to forgive others because of the love that we show towards others. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his, Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on the earth, peace among those whom with he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the sayings that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angels before he was conceived in the womb. Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let's pray. Our wonderful, great God and Father of heaven, your name is holy. Father, we are so thankful for the blessing that you have given us through the name of Jesus Christ, through the name of your Son, who died on the cross for our sins. And we are thankful for the blessing that you have called us by name and that you have blessed us and that you have made provisions for us and that you have provided a sacrifice in your son, Jesus Christ, and that you have delivered us to this point in our lives you have delivered us to a point in each of our lives when we made the decision to become your children. And you have given us the name of your children. Father, we are thankful for the, for the blessings of this church that meets in this place. And we are thankful for the blessings that we have in your son. This is our prayer in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his, and, and, and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles was reigning over Judea in place of his father, Herod, He was afraid to go there, and being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. Matthew 2, 13 to 14, 19 to 23. John 14, verse 2. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you singing praises to you. Father, you are love. And you have proved this love by providing all the things that we need. You have given us your son, the most precious gift of all, the embodiment of love. You have given us this planet to live on. Of all the planets that we know of in the galaxies, only the earth has the proper conditions for us to live in. It is the right distance from the sun for the temperature that range that we need. It spins at the right speed to provide the gravity that generates the weather, the wind, and the rain to provide the plants and animals that we use for food and clothing and shelter. The earth gives us the materials that we need for shelter and for the other conveniences that you have enabled us to create and enjoy. You have provided medical workers to take care of us and you have provided emergency personnel to rescue and to protect us. You have given us a land to live in that allows us to worship you as we understand you want to be worshiped. You provide whatever we need, wherever we are, you watch over us. You prepare our way for us to be with you. Your blessings are innumerable. If we spent our whole life trying to list them, we wouldn't run out of time. You have provided families for us to nurture and to dwell with. And when our blood families fail us, you have provided the spiritual family for us to lean on and be with. Father, there are times that you have provided blessings for us from sources that we have no idea where they come from until afterwards. Father, your love for us is so immense, it is only surpassed by the gifts that you have given us. Lord God, when we think of all that you do for us, it is all we can do to not cry and weep with tears of sorrow at our unworthiness of of these gifts. And at the same time, we want to cry with tears of joy and thankfulness because of this love that you've shown for us. Father, we love you because you have loved us. And Father, we thank you. And we thank you. And we thank you. But we can never thank you enough for all of the things that you have 
bestowed upon us, all of the richness that you have given us, all of the blessings, all of the love. So through your son, we thank you. And thank you. Amen. Luke's, Luke, the second chapter, verses 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to, the, to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard them were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And, when he, and he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Psalm 122, verse 1. Let us go to the house of the Lord. If you would, bow with me and we'll pray. Our Heavenly Father, you, you sent us Jesus, who was and is holy and innocent, unstained from any sin. He, he was exalted in heaven and came to be with us for, for a time on earth. It's, we can see from your word he was, he was tempted but never sinned. There was nothing deceitful about him. Instead, he, he gave us an example of how to live, how to, how to be in this world. The, the punishment that we deserve for our sins, he took on. It was borne by Christ. He took our place as the sinner, and we took his place as the righteous one in your eyes. And we're thankful for Jesus for taking our sins, for making us righteous before you. Jesus has delivered us from a life that had no purpose it was futile it was meaningless and he has given us one that has purpose has significance and it's because of our relationship we can have with you we were purified from all our dead works and now we can serve a, a living god we became something new a new creation through the through the shedding of jesus blood so we thank you, Jesus, for what you did that we could not do for ourselves, reconciling us to our Father in heaven and giving us hope for a life after this world that's everlasting. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish, Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, 
Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory. And his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. As we turn our minds towards the Lord's Supper, I'd like to share with you a story. It's about a man who was burned and disfigured in a fire as he was attempting to save his parents. Unfortunately, his parents died, and he mistakenly interpreted his pain and disfigurement as punishment from God. He wouldn't let anyone in. He shut the world off. He shut out his wife. He would not let his wife even see him. His wife then went to a plastic surgeon. And the surgeon said, I can restore your husband's faith. But she knew that her husband would not accept any help. And so she said, I have a request. She said, I want you to disfigure my face like my husband's. If I can share in his pain, maybe he will let me back into his life. The shocked surgeon denied the request, but was so moved by the love of the wife that he came to visit the man. So he knocked on the husband's door and, and said, I'm a plastic surgeon. And I, I, I know that I can restore your faith. There was silence. So the surgeon told the man of, of the wife's proposal to have her face disfigured, to be like his, in hopes, as he says, that you would let her back in your life. That's how much she loves you. We think about that. The wife's love for her husband is just a fraction of the love that God has for us. He did more than just make that offer. He took on our face and he lived in our broken life. He became like us. Think of the places that he was willing to go a feeding trough, a carpentry shop, wilderness areas, cemeteries, the cross, all to reach us. Even taking on the disfigurement of our sin as he hung on the cross. Isaiah says it this way in Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 4. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes, we are healed. It may be the greatest thing that Jesus has ever done for us. And that is to make a choice. Paul describes that choice in Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 6, where he's speaking of Christ and he says, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus made the choice to come to earth, knowing who we were, so that he could show us love. I'd ask for you for just a moment to put yourself in his place. If you knew that those you loved would laugh in your face, would you still care? If you knew that the tongues that you had made would mock you, that the mouths you made would spit at you, that the hands you made would crucify you, would you still come to the earth and save them? You see, that's what love does. It puts the beloved before itself. Jesus made the choice to be human. To show that you are someone so special to him. So as we join together this morning in the Lord's Supper... I want us to look to the cross and let Jesus speak to us. That he would say, that's me you see up there, your maker, your God in the flesh. Nail stabbed and bleeding, covered with spit and sin soaked. That's your sin I'm feeling. That's your death I'm dying. That's your resurrection I'm living. That's how much I love you because I chose to come and save you. Let us think upon these things as we join together in the Lord's Supper. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love for us. Father, we think back through your relationship with Adam and in the garden, walking and talking. And as the song says, like no other is ever known. And we think about the love and the joy and we think about the the heartbreak of that separation. And Father, as we think about Jesus making the choice to come down and make a way for us to be redeemed, to be forgiven, and to be reconciled with you. We think about his choice, knowing that he would be apart from you. But the joy at the thought of all of your children have an opportunity to be reconciled with you. And Father, we thank you for Jesus paying that price. Father, as we partake of this bread, let us go back to the cross. And as Adam said, knowing that the hands that you made and the mouths that you made and the people that you made would treat your son in that way and yet he still chose 
to be that sacrifice. Let us focus on that this morning as we partake of this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, again, we come to you, continuing our thanks for Jesus. Father, the blood that he shed, the blood that redeems us to you. As has been said here, we could thank you and thank you and thank you until the end of time, and it wouldn't be enough. Father, we just pray that you will pierce our hearts, that we would have clean hearts and tender hearts that continually grow in our understanding of your love for us and what was done for us and that by that continual evolution of the understanding of how much you love us and just what Jesus did for us that we would be compelled to show that in the actions of our lives and how we regard others that we offer forgiveness that we offer patience and long-suffering. And we know that this blood, you've shown us the ultimate expression of those exact things to us because you love us and you long for us to be with you. We thank you for Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. As a means of encouragement this morning, if, if anyone needs um, prayers or would like to ask the elders to help them in some way, we have an opportunity. I pray that throughout the rest of this week, uh, those of you that are here with us today, our members and all of our guests that are here today, that you think about Christ, think about Jesus, and that uh, he had a family, he had a home, he was given a name, and he served others, and he worshiped God. May we think about these things as we go uh, throughout this week and look around and find ways we can serve others and look for ways to worship God even if it's just looking around at nature and all the great things he's created. Would you stand as we sing? Thank you Jeff and thanks to all who participated and led us in our worship. This has been so uplifting and just what a joy to be here. We want to welcome uh, all of our guests as already previously mentioned. It's a delight to have you here. I'll refer everyone, guests and members alike, to the bulletin, a uh, number of things happening. Um, when we reflect on this service today, family, you know, our name, our home, our opportunities to worship and serve, it's incredible. So with all of these things in mind, let's approach God in prayer, being so thankful for everything that we have. Our most gracious Lord, we are in awe of your unbounded love, your infinite grace, and to read of your loving kindness and knowing it is everlasting is something that we can absorb and apply to our lives, meditate on, and how it shapes us. That all of these things are before us and can give us confidence of the homes that we will have in heaven with you the assurance that we have that you are all powerful and in control of this world that as we open our minds and our hearts to embrace all of this we pray that our trust in you will grow that your joy that you so freely share with us that will shine through our lives and be a beacon of light to all of those around us 
We thank you, dear Lord, for this family of believers and the encouragement that we can draw on from one another. We pray that we will always focus on you in giving you the glory and living your will in our lives. We ask all these things that in Christ's name, amen.